Alhamdulillah. Was salatu was salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. Ahabatu fillah. Nabiyyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Assami wa ta'a ala marya al-Muslim fi ma yuhibbu wa kariyah. Ma lam yu'miru bi ma'asiyatin fi idha umira bi ma'asiyatin fala sam'a wa la ta'a. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said, Hearing and obeying the Muslim authority in what you love and what you hate, as long as he does not order to disobedience. And if he orders to disobedience, then there's no hearing and there's no obeying. And this is Ruahu Muslim. This is in Sahih Muslim. Ahabatifillah, very important for us to have some understanding of this in the contemporary context with all the revolutions, with all the things that have happened primarily in the Arab world of these overthrowing of the these attempts to overthrow and the fitna and discord that resulted from it and this is why Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a they make their principle is based upon that that and hadith like that and that the Salaf as Salih Ridwanullahi alayhim in the they had the later part of the Salaf had consensus that that was the Sabil al-Mu'mineen, that it was impermissible to rebel against a tyrannical ruler. And so this is why up until now, Ahl sunnah holds on to those principles. Look at the fitna that we see today in Syria. Look at the fitna and the uh, tyranny that we see that reigns in Egypt which is worse than it was before. And look at all the fitna around and in Yemen and, and, and these places in Libya that they suffer, the people suffer tremendously because of the rebellion and the <laughs> departing from that qaeda. This is the main reason, this ruling of the Salaf. And all the political fractioning and the war that has been invited into many of these countries and the open space that it has allowed for the other tyranny, the tyranny of Al-Qaeda and the tyranny of Daesh and other groups, that these groups thrived in that vacuum of power. Likewise, Akhwan al-Muslimin being bankrupt, that they open this door and do not know how to... Uh, close it and now they suffer as an organization from around the world so it shows us by adhering to those kawaii those principles the menhaj of the salaf it may not seem politically astute it may not seem pretty it may not seem fashionable but by adhering to those base principles you have safety and security and it allows for da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids you in obedience to him and making your system uh, in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law. Uh, also from this hadith, we see the Prophet said, And if he commands you to disobedience, then there is no hearing and there is no obeying. From this we learn that if the leader commands you to disobedience to Allah, then there's no uh, obeying him in those commands of disobedience. However, what must be highlighted and what differs between the takfiri groups is they negate ta'a. They negate obedience to the leader in entirety, in its entirety, through uh, sinful acts of the obedient. This differs from Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah does not make takfir of the leaders without the right to do so. And Ahl Sunnah does not call to rebellions and coups, which differs from the Khawarij and other groups. Ahl Sunnah says, okay, if the leader orders you to do riba, you do not obey him in that. You do not obey him in those actions of disobedience, but rather you follow him in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you do not obey him in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.